quite honestly, I was working for the state, um, and of course we all know that the state has had a tremendous amount of uh, reduction in funds. Um, I worked with the Department of Mental Health and Substance Abuse Services as their grants management specialist. Um, you know, I have a Bachelor's of Business Administration. I also have a, a Master's in Human Relations with an emphasis in Organizational Development. Um, when my job was um, terminated um, for the state, you know, that that's a personal blow. You know, even though it's your job that's being terminated, not you personally, you're still you're still gone. And emotionally, mentally, you know, it, it really it really messes with your mind and, and your your own inner you start doubting yourself, et cetera. And then, um, like I said, I, I sat down with myself and talked with myself about actually, okay, now you've got this tremendous amount of knowledge, you know, you you you're at the age now where you can actually do this with a little bit of help. You know, you need to to get busy, um, or it'll the the opportunity will pass you by. Coming here actually gave me that inner confidence, and that it, it made me reach back into myself and regain that inner strength uh, to move forward and to remember where I came from as far as how I got to where I'm, I am today. And sometimes that, that sometimes it's lost um, in, the, in the process. The Management Collective was conceived um, probably about two years ago. Uh, I've been in the grants management profession for approximately 17 years now. And um, we have always seen somewhat of a disadvantage uh, to some of the smaller housing authorities, some of the, the tribal organizations, some of the local uh, government agencies, and some of the faith and nonprofit-based um, community services providers. With the Management Collective, what we really perceived it doing is to provide a, a cadre of services uh, that addressed uh, each one of their needs uh, we can provide them with basic strategic planning, needs assessments. We can help them manage their grants. We're the boots on the ground. The, the first thing that we like to do is just go down and sit down, grab a cup of coffee. You know, let's talk about what's going on, where you think your problems are. Um, if we find that, you know, there needs to be a needs assessment done, then we offer that to them. Um, and then we come back and we help them analyze that needs assessment. You know, what we do a SWOT analysis or or whatever is necessary to make it uh, very understandable for them that, you know, maybe you need to hire a maintenance person half time, you know, to keep your housing units up to date uh, and where they will pass inspection when HUD comes. Um, if you're a small nonprofit, uh, if we've done the needs, ass needs assessment for them, you know, it may be a community needs assessment. Maybe they're dealing with a specific population. Um, and uh, we help them analyze that data as well and uh, try and help them develop a plan of action, uh, both short term, especially if they're needing quick fixes. Uh, we do not try to do Band-Aid approaches. We try to do fix. And then also long term. Uh, we want them, like I said, to be very prosperous and grow and continue to provide the services that they've been providing uh, without having to be burdened by the additional administrative burdens that sometimes the federal government, state agencies, et cetera, place on them. We know that a lot of, for instance, small community-based organizations provide services to uh, people in need. However, they may also need, for instance, um, to try and help them find housing. And so we have a a person on board who is our uh, senior um, housing consultant and um, he can help with the community-based, faith-based, or even the housing authorities um, to improve their programs, apply for capital fund programs, you know, where they all inter intertwine. And, you know, giving the Business Development Center all credit, you know, they do a tremendous job. Uh, they have offered the Management Collective 
untold resources. Uh, just, you know, whether they've really helped us come along uh, and come into our own. We haven't fledged yet. We're still here, and we plan on staying here a while. Um, but, yes, what we provide uh, does mirror what the Business Development Center does, maybe in a different way, a different perspective. We have to look at our services as being braided, uh, and in doing that, we know that they often overlap, but we can call on each one of our subject matter experts, uh, you know, to come in and give us their area that we need their help on or their assistance on. Uh, it's kind of like a co-op of, of professionals um, that have a very, very particular and highly skilled um, focus as far as their their um, their expertise. We want to help them either get established, like in submitting a 501c3 application, doing their IRS determination letters, making sure that you know they're registered on the central contract registry, et cetera. But if they've already got a lot of that done and they're just struggling with certain administrative aspects of their organization, we can come in and do a, a, a needs assessment and assist them in, in, in growth. As you said, you know, that's a very good descriptive. Uh, we want to help them do a better job at what they're doing. Um, you know, they're the boots on the ground as far as the, you know, the reaching out to the people, but we come in behind the scenes and help them actually improve their processes. The collective in its envisionment was, was basically putting together subject matter experts um, that we recognize someone in the tribal organizations, some, uh, someone in housing, um, someone in faith and community-based organizations, someone in grants management, et cetera, putting us all together as a collective, which is where the name come from, um, and where we could provide various services across a broad spectrum. Well, I think one of the, the, the big things that has helped us as a small business is the cost effectiveness of being here, and the facilities are just phenomenal. Um, and, and I think for a small business that's very important because you're putting all your eggs into this basket and you know you don't have a lot of funds that are um, you know free flowing you know you're, you're trying to develop a business in our instance on a shoestring and uh, with that economical aspect of uh, doing business with and out of the small business or the business development center then you know, that gives us a really good um, opportunity to kind of put our focus um, into what we do best as opposed to seeing where every dollar is going to come from so we can pay the rent uh, if we were to go out and rent an office space that is, you know, comparable. There are so many things that, that the Business Development Center has offered as far as, like I said, the streamlining process would be more for giving us the opportunity to have access to all the resources that they provide and doing so in a very cost efficient manner. Economically it has helped us, like I said, by, through savings um, on our costs incurred. We've actually been able to expand a little bit, uh, update equipment that we needed to update. We're going through the, the um, preliminary process of identifying possible uh, application for um, 8A status. Um, and of course, being Native American, I am a minority women-owned business, economically disadvantaged. So, and he's led me all down these little pathways that I'm like, I have these aha moments uh, that, you know, it's like, oh, yeah, that's that's going to work right. You know, that's going to be really good for our company. If there's a question that we have or an issue that we're facing, we have the experts that we can go to and say, look, we need help. And I think a lot of small businesses that just go out into the marketplace that don't have that opportunity, sometimes that may be the point at where they either fail or or they continue to struggle. Because of the, the development center 
um, I've actually joined the American Indian Chamber of Commerce, which provides a tremendous opportunity and an avenue um, to do business with, you know, with Native American entities, tribes, um, and uh, also get our business on the map with regard to them. I knew that before I came here that it was almost overwhelming of what, you know, I kind of thought, okay, I need to do this and I need to do that. I had no idea a lot of the times as to what, you know, what avenue should I take, what approach. And then coming here, it, it was kind of like, like I said, the aha moment where you start gaining clarity in, in your direction and you gain more focus as time progresses. And and it may not even be a, a formal meeting with, with Greg or with Al, or it may be just standing in the hallway talking and you get this, again, an aha moment, and it kind of, kind of takes you down the path on toward your, your ultimate goals and objectives. Especially with today's economy, uh, before I was traveling round trip, probably 30 miles back and forth, um, now I'm 2.8 miles from my home, and so it's a tremendous savings with gas the way that it is. It's also very convenient. Uh, if I need to come up here and work on things during the weekend, I can. If I need to stay late, I can. Um, and it, it, it's, it's wonderful. It really is. At this point, yes, I'm the only certified grants management specialist in the state of Oklahoma. Um, I serve on the board of directors for the National Grants Management Association, and we developed a, um, um, a grants management body of knowledge, um, and we've actually taken it to the next level. We're doing, uh, last year was our, was our launching of our first grants management certification, and uh, I participated in developing the training materials, um, doing the training on site at Hershey, Pennsylvania. Um, we had, I think, 145 graduates, including the trainers, that received their, their, um, their grandfathered CGMS, or Certified Grants Management Specialist Certificate. So it's very exciting, and we plan to go even further this year in Alexandria. We try to provide cost-effective ways for small entities that are struggling um, with the services um, and do them very cost effectively. Um, we want to see them grow. Uh, it's not about us, it's about the people they serve. They're the ones that are out in the communities helping with homelessness. Um, they are the ones that are out in the community dealing with uh, domestic violence. They're the small housing entity in Southeast Oklahoma that has 19 public housing units and one full-time staff person. And we want to provide them, like I said, a very, very cost-effective way to engage the service of subject matter experts um, so they can, they can continue to prosper and grow. And um, they can also meet, the main thing is to make sure that we're keeping them in compliance with current federal rate regulations and making sure that they're updated through us uh, on any new trends or any new rules or regulations that may come down the pike. But also, we hope that we continue to give them, uh, you know, a, a, the benefit of a long-term relationship with the Management Collective, simply because, you know, they may they may get one process down, et cetera, and then something may come down that we may need to adjust. They may need our services. There may be some staff change, and they may need training. Um, they may have a new executive director or a new board of commissioners or board of directors uh, that need, need to be brought up to speed um, on the nonprofit. And so we, we want to establish that long-term uh, relationship, however it may not be monetarily, uh, between the two of us at the time after they fledged. Uh, it may be just interaction, um, you know, building that social network of agencies that provide services within the state and then hopefully across the nation.